If you have a younger child who does not know how to read yet and you're going to start homeschooling them soon, then I have some excellent tips for you in this video on how to naturally teach your children how to read. So if you're new to homeschooling, you might be super nervous about teaching your children how to read because school has made it seem so complicated. And in John Holt's book, How Children Learn, I wanted to read a small section to you. Teaching of reading has become much more scientific, fragmented, and disassociated from both the reality and the pleasures of real books, real newspapers and magazines, real letters from real people, and our reading problems have grown much worse. So what I want you to think about when teaching your children to read is that the goal is not just to help them to understand what letters and words mean so that they can read. The goal is to help them see that reading is essential to our living and it's also essential for our pleasure and how we learn things. It should be fun. Children should want to read. So the first tip that I would give you for teaching your kids how to read, if you've got young ones that don't know how to read yet, you've got babies, toddlers, preschoolers, this is the first thing that you should do. Read to them. Now, I know that a lot of parents, you know, if they've been working before and their kids were in daycare or, you know, you might have thought, I don't really need to read to my kids or I don't have time to read to my kids. Um, you know, the people at the daycare will read to them. I would highly encourage you to read to your children because I will tell you something. I went to a traditional school and I learned how to read at school, but I did not learn to love reading at school. I learned how to love reading because my mom read to me from as young as I can remember. Um, I have very vivid, strong, wonderful memories of my mom reading to me. And I would sit on her lap and she did all of the voices and she read Berenstain Bears and she read um, Treasures of the Snow and she read uh, Chronicles of Narnia and she read Heidi and, and the Robert McCloskey classics and all of those things I still remember to this day because my mom knew how important it was to read to her children and she made time for that even as a working mom. The other thing that she really modeled for us um, for a love of reading is that she was an avid reader herself. So I would see her reading all those chapter books to herself at night when she was going to bed or during the day she would be reading books and so she modeled it for me. And so that's the other thing is that you have to, maybe you're not a reader yourself, um, but you can show, you can model reading to your children just by reading things, maybe not books, but maybe you could be reading the newspaper. Maybe you could be reading a magazine. Maybe you could be reading letters that you get in the mail. One of the things that John Holt wrote about in learning all the time in this book was that um, it's so important for us to model reading in front of our kids. What he says right here on page 25 is, if we read and write, the children will want to. If we don't, they won't. So children have to see that reading is essential to our lives and it is enjoyable. It's not just something that we have to learn how to do to get through life. Reading is actually where we get most of our knowledge from. So we can learn anything that we want to learn about through books. And then we can also just read as a source of pleasure. We could read adventures. We could read mysteries. We could read, um, you know, fictional books. We could read non-fictional books. Everything, it should be an enjoyment. It makes you a well-rounded, well-educated person to be a reader. And so if you have not been a reader before, I just highly encourage you to become a reader. Um, and if you don't want to become a reader, then you can always still just read to your own children um, and show them that that is something that you make a priority because it's important. Now, a lot of parents who are not used to reading to their kids, I've heard that they just use audiobooks because sometimes they just can't, you know, they have trouble reading aloud. Um, they're just not used to it. And so they use audiobooks, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with listening to audiobooks. But I have to tell you from my own personal experience, holding a, a real physical book and, you know, my daughters are sitting on my lap or they're looking over my shoulder when we're reading a bedtime story. And I can see my almost seven year old. She already 
nobody knows how to read, but I can see her following along with the words with her eyes as I'm reading it because she can read it herself. And so she's looking at all the words. And then my four-year-old does not know how to read yet, but she is like, where are you on the page now? Like she'll seriously ask me that. She knows that I'm reading those words. And a lot of times they will stop me mid-sentence and be like, what does that word mean? What? It, why did you just read that word like that? What does that mean? Or um, my daughter will point out things like, why is the word walk spelled with an L? We don't say this. We don't sound out that letter. Um, so they are looking at that print and they understand that the, the connection between the print and the words that I am speaking. And you can't get that from an audiobook. And so looking at that print and knowing that every book has words and illustrations and we're reading all those words and um, and they just ask such good questions while we're reading. Um, like I said, they'll ask me the definition of different words that they don't know um, in the context of that book. And my kids will know what words mean when they are reading something so that it makes more sense in the context. Um, And then the way that my kids learn spelling is by reading books. Um, they'll, They'll see the words and they'll see how they are spelled. So they are good spellers. The best way to spell better is to read a lot and write a lot. This will fill your eye with the look of words and your fingers with the feel of them. Good spellers do not look up many words in the dictionaries or memorize spelling rules. When they're not sure of how to spell a word, they spell it several ways and pick the one that looks best. In almost every case, it turns out to be right. Something else that John Holt said in this book, Learning All the Time, um, is that people learn to read well and get big vocabularies from books, not workbooks and dictionaries, right? So if they are reading good books, they will expand their vocabulary because there's lots of different words in lots of different books. And the more books that you read, the more diverse they are, the the different authors, um, they're going to get a very big vocabulary from that rather than workbooks. And it will mean something to them because hopefully if they're reading a book that they really enjoy, those words will stick with them. So to sum up, in a very natural way, children can learn how to read just by seeing you model it for them and reading books to them so that they get that familiarity with text, with written text. But it doesn't always have to just be books. John Holt in his books suggests having the New York Times in your house or any other type of newspaper that you have. Just have it laying around your house for your kids to look at, as well as stubs, uh, copies of letters, political posters, bank statements, copies of instructional manuals, um, copies of contracts, warranties. In short, lots of stuff from the adult world um, where all those people are doing those mysterious and interesting things. So I found that so fascinating. So it's it's easy. You just you have a lot of books in your house, but also just a lot of other things that the kids are able to read. And then I take my kids to the library and I let them browse the books and let them pick out whatever they want. So I highly recommend the library is free and it's an amazing place for your kids to go and explore and find what interests them because If they read things that actually matter to them, they will become readers, all right? So you don't want to have to always be picking things out for your kids and forcing them to read what you want them to read. Um, You can do read-alouds and choose those read-alouds for them, but let them pick out their own books. Give them that freedom. And then just have a lot of things around the house for them to read. Um... I'll tell you from my personal experience, all of my kids, my three older kids that know how to read, um, they will read signs um, everywhere that we are out. So we'll be driving down the street and there are billboards and there are shop signs and there are signs for construction and all those things. And my older kids will just read the signs out loud to any everybody else in the car or they'll be like oh look at that and they'll read that sign um my daughters and i went on a um date last night and we were walking through these we were walking down this strip mall looking at all the shop windows and they my daughter who knows how to read was reading all of the little signs in there she tries to read everything that is in front of her all print so there were signs on the windows there were signs for each store um there were notices on the board 
door on the windows and she read all of them. And if she didn't know how to pronounce a word, she would just ask me to help her and I helped her. And so when they see print, it's like they can't help but read it. And it's everywhere around us. So have a lot of books in your house. Um, have lots of other print material for them to look at on their own. Take them to the library. It's free. Just let them go and browse and discover things. Um, when you go out, I guarantee your kids will look at things and read them and they will discuss them. So you have to just have that natural desire to want to read. And then the enjoyment of reading comes from them picking out their own books or you reading aloud really fantastic books to them. I have read to my children um, since before my oldest was born. I actually read to him while I was still pregnant with him, which might sound crazy, but that's just what I did because I read Jim Trelease's Read Aloud Handbook, which was life-changing for me. And this is a topic for another video. Um, but I read this and it's so, so powerful. And so I, re I have read to my kids every single day of their lives. We do, we when they took naps, I would read to them before their nap time and then we've always done bedtime stories and to this day we do bedtime stories and that's just something that is a non-negotiable we do it every night and then I also um, read chapter books aloud to them and then we also read in our homeschool work and so we're always reading high quality literature to our children I love this quote from John Holt that says, young people want, need, and like to read books that have meaning for them. And that when such books are put within easy reach, they will sooner or later figure out without being taught and with only minimal outside help how to read them. So what that's saying is if you have a child who sees a cover of a book that looks interesting and meaningful to them on a topic that they're really excited about, they will definitely read that book. So you have to just look for things that are going to inspire your kids. Another tip that I have is don't be quick to correct your kids if they mispronounce a word or if they're like trying to sound it out um, don't be impatient with them and just give it to them let them figure it out because the more that you sit over them and try to correct them and try to tell them you know you're not doing it right the more frustrated and stressed out they're going to be so I would just be calm about it be patient with them and let them work it out on their own and that will build their confidence because they figured it out without your help Another tip that I would give you is to let your kids read to you even when they don't know how to read. So a lot of the times, um, you know, like I said, I read to my kids since they were infants and as they got to be toddler age and they could hold the book themselves, they would bring a book over and they would start babbling and pointing to things, re reading it to me because I had already modeled reading to them. And then as my oldest got to be old enough to, um, to read by himself, he would read to his younger siblings. And so he would sit there and he would try to read it. But a lot of the times he would also just make up stories for the pictures if he didn't know all the words. And it's just a great practice for kids understanding how to read and what books are really for, which is just for our enjoyment. What happens right now is I will read bedtime stories to my daughters at the same time and the minute and I let them choose which books I'm going to read to them for bedtime and my youngest who doesn't know how to read yet um, as soon as I'm done reading the book to her she will grab it and go get in her bed and read it again to herself. And she just makes up the story as she goes along or from what she can remember that I read to her. And it's the sweetest thing. Um, what we're trying to do, again, is to just cultivate a love of reading and books and understand how and, and help them to see that when you give children the ability to read, you're really just opening up the world to them because they can read about everything and anything in the world and it is the greatest freedom to have. So if you're like, okay, Beth, I really love this idea of naturally turning, you know, turning my kids into lovers of books, but I don't know where to find the best books. I have the best place for you to find the best books. It is the Read Aloud Revival website with Sarah McKenzie. She also has the 
amazing podcast, Read Aloud Revival. Um, I have been listening to it from the very beginning when she started it back in like 2015. And she just knows where to find the best, best books for all ages, babies all the way up to high schoolers, college. And she even uh, talks about some of the books that she reads of her, you know, of her own. But she is just the absolute best resource that I can offer you. This is not an affiliate. I'm not associated with her at all. I just adore her. She wrote the book, The Read Aloud Family. But if you go to the website, she has free book lists for any topic, um, any age group, and I just absolutely love her recommendations for finding the books with the best words and the best illustrations from the best authors. So I want to point you to that. That is the place to get started for all of your book recommendations. So I hope that that just encouraged you to let you know that you don't have to stress out about teaching your kids how to read. You really want to instead teach them to love books. Don't make it a stressful thing for them. They will learn how to read. Uh, if, if you're worried that, oh, they're six years old and they still don't know how to read, that's okay. Everybody learns how to read eventually. Um, and what we don't want to do is push them when they're not ready. And we also want them to have a wonderful relationship with books instead of looking at it as a school thing. Because there are so many people that leave school and they don't have been taught how to read, but then once they graduate, they never want to open another book again because they might have been taught how to read, but they didn't understand the importance of reading. I love this quote from Learning All the Time. It said, your conventionally taught child, even when much older than Anna, he's talking about some girl in this book, uh, may know nothing of books except how to figure out what the words say. Anna knows everything else about books, including all the important things. So books are not just where we get a lot of information, which, you know, is, yes, we do get a lot of information from it, but it can also change our lives reading. Um, and I am an avid reader, and I really do believe that it's because my mom introduced me to books from the youngest age possible. And she read really good books to me. She let me uh, get a library card at a young age and let me go pick out my own books on my own. And I loved it. So even though I had to read for school, that was not for pleasure. I would come home and read my own books for pleasure. So that's what I recommend to you. You want to have your kids love books and know Know that they are an, an amazing source of, of uh, joy and excitement and um, life-changing experiences. And they can also find everything that they need to know about the world through books. So enjoy your child. Read to them. Read in front of them. And don't buy formal curriculum right away. <laughs> So, all right. I hope that that was helpful. If it was, give it a like and let me know in the comments what you found helpful about this video. And if you have any extra questions, you can leave them in the, the comments below as well. Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram. I share a lot of our day-to-day -day things on there. And make sure that you are subscribed to my new unschooling podcast. It is called Teach From Home, just like my channel. And I talk all about these unschooling topics as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.